Hello, BookTube. I have a tag for you on what I'm reasonably certain is Tuesday. <laughs> I'm reasonably certain this is Tuesday. And if it is, as I theorize, Tuesday, then it's time for Tag Tuesday. And I have a tag that fits in perfectly with the BookTube event, Summer Fling 2020, which is going on in August. Me and a group of other BookTubers are doing Summer Fling in August of 2020 to encourage you to read more romances, because we all love romance novels. Uh, so I found a tag. Uh, that I believe I am the only romance reader on BookTube who has not yet done. <laughs> this is the Rome, Get to Know the Romance Reader tag, which was created by Bree Hill. Uh, and I want to I do this tag for today just because I want to talk about romances a lot in August to, to, to make sure you all know about Summer Fling 2020. However, if you're not interested in romance, if you're absolutely never going to read a romance and not interested in hearing it, that's what this tag is about. So it probably won't make much sense to you or be much interested to you if, you, if, you, uh, if you're in that boat. Uh, so let's see here. Just a few questions. Uh, starting with number one, what is your romance origin story? What got you into romance? Uh, and my story is something I've alluded to on this channel before. I was the same way that a lot of people are. I was just mindlessly snobbish about romance novels. Thought they were uh, light, breathless, silly, stupid, uh, easy to do. I, I, I'm sure that I commented more than once that if I ever, if I ever got a, the need for quick cash, I would just spit out a romance novel and it would do really well. Uh, also, uh, I had the, the concomitant snobbish attitudes about romance readers. I thought they were the worst readers, the dumbest readers. Uh, the ones who could be perfectly satisfied with stuff that was, as I'm sure I said, pure formula. And I'm sure that I said that while I was enjoying the latest Rex Stout. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> at, the, at, at one point I knew a really sharp, really engaged reader who was also not only a romance a reader, but a romance author, and she called me on it. It's as simple as that. She called me on it one day. It was all smiles, friend, friendly the whole time. Uh, but she called me on it. She said, you know, you are snobbish about this. You, you rail about snobs. You say that you can't stand literary snobs. And I say, yes, you're right. I hate them. And the, she said, but you are one. Uh, on, especially when it comes to this genre. I know this genre well, and you are selling it short, obviously, through a lack of knowledge. Uh, that, that hit home. And I admit, uh, I mean, I, I angrily said to her, well, all right, if, you, if, you're, if you're so sure of that, who would you suggest to fix it? And she handed me a couple of Joanna Lindsay, and I thought, I thought I prop, my first reaction was, well, I will tear these to shreds because they will be every bit as bad as I've always said these things are. She handed me uh, uh, Kathleen Woodowus and uh, Joanna Lindsay. And I think she, she sort of correctly figured out that she should start with historicals, that that would be an easier way for me to get, for me to maybe realize the error of my ways. She was entirely right. She was entirely right. I took the books. I, I went into them thinking, well, I will rip these to shreds, and then I will know that I'm right. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I had ringing in my head her warning, her admonition to me that all genres have their guidelines. All genres have their corsets, their strictures. And if you accept the strictures of all other genres, and then you go into one and you say, no, no, you have to be War and Peace, then you're being unfair. What, you, what we do when we enter the realm of genre fiction is to abide by the, the, the conventions of that genre. It's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> that is, and that applies to all genres. Uh, it's just this one has has uh, bad PR among some aspects of the reading public. And I had that warning rattling around in my head when I was reading these books, and I thought, okay, well, if I take this for what it's trying to be instead of what I want it to be, either to hate it or what I think it should be or whatever, if I take it for what it is, is it a good example of what it is? Is it effective for what it is? And they were. They absolutely were. It was the worst moment of my life. I had to go back to her and say, well, okay, you were right. <laughs> and she, uh, she was graceful. <laughs> she was graceful about it. So that's, that's my origin story. I went from, from snob to nabob <laughs> right away, right overnight, literally overnight. Uh, question number two, if you could be the heroine in a romance novel, who would, re who would be the author and what's one trope you'd insist be in the story? I'm going to pass on this question as I do on this kind of question in every tag. I do not want to be a character in a novel. I do not want to be a fictional character. Let's just move straight on. My answer wouldn't be any help. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be any good. I can't engage in that kind of game. So 
Uh, let's move on to number three. Uh, question number three. What is a romance you've read this year that you want more people to read? Uh, it's it's Lord, Lord Holt Takes a Bride by the great Vivian Lord. I wonder if I have it here. Do I have it here? Yes, I do. <laughs> a little old bedside reading. I finished it a while ago, though. This is the book with our boy Paul Marin on the cover. Uh, just terrific. Just a, ter a terrific modern style Regency romance. First book in a series. Very, very enjoyable. Uh, and funny. Vivian Lord is, I mean, a lot of these modern r uh, romance authors, especially historical romance authors, I think their their palpable joy in what they're doing comes through so that there's quite a bit of wit involved. Uh, but that, this is, uh, you want more people to read. I don't know if I want more people to read. I, I strongly recommend it to romance readers. If, especially if you haven't read Vivian Lord. She's fantastic. Oh, every book of hers has pleased me. Um, question number four is, what is your favorite romance subgenre? Uh, and for me, I don't know that I have an example nearby. It is Regency romances, yes. This is a, this is a Regency romance, but not it's not all Regency romance. My very favorite subgenre is a sub-subgenre, as some of you will know if you've watched this channel. Old style, Signet, Avon, and Zebra Regency romances uh, that don't have any bare flesh. That don't have characters rogering each other in the bathhouse in chapter three or anything like that well, there's nothing there's nothing anachronistic there's nothing explicit at all they're they're very um uh, patterned historical romance novels where the marriage takes place after the last page of the book and any kind of of explicit stuff also takes place after the last page of the book, aside from accidental flirting and accidental encounters and whatnot, a lot of people end up uh, encountering each other in the same pool, the same pond, whatever, but but uh, always accidental and always scandalous. I mean, these things are much more uh, in line with uh, modern day sensibilities. Totally anachronistic. The people of the time would not have acted that way, but you sort of give it that because the, it adds to the element of fun. Whereas the older style Regency romances that I'm talking about are all um, dialogue. They're all social maneuvering. They're, there's none of the steamy side of things, even mildly steamy. And that is my favorite. <laughs> I have hundreds of them and I love them. Uh, I could kick myself. That I went, Two years ago I went to the Five Colleges book sale with Mark Richardson up in Vermont. A huge used book event that just fills all the hallways and gymnasiums and classrooms of uh, high school, a local high school. And <sighs> There was a whole gymnasium full of tables covered in all kinds of fiction. And off in the corner, there was a whole corner devoted to romance. And in that corner, there was a whole table devoted to Regency romances of exactly the kind that I'm describing. And I spent, I must have spent 30 minutes in that corner, just squatted down, going book by book by book by book by book, looking at them all and picking out a pile of them. When they were, I think, 25 cents a piece. And, and oh, oh, I could kick myself even at the time, I mean, I did a huge haul up in Vermont of all of these romances, but I could kick myself because what I should have done was gone up to one of the ladies that was running that area of the floor. These were wonderful, nice people, like everyone else in Vermont. They, these were wonderful, nice people. I should have gone up to the lady running that table of 25 cent eat books and said, I want all of these. I want to box up every single Regency romance that is here. And in exchange for that, I will give you $50. Which is more than this whole room is going to see today. So, so, oh, I, how about it? How about we have a deal? I want all of these. I, if if you'll help me box them up, I'll pay you fifty dollars, which is, you know, a lot more than what you would get for all of them put together. Or I could even made the price higher than that; it would still have been a bargain. I should have done that. Instead, I got fifty of them. I think thereabouts, fifty of them, and brought them back, and was chortling and so happy. Uh, and in the back of my mind, I was thinking, well, you didn't get any of the others, but they'll be they'll be there when Five Colleges Book Sale happens next year. And then a pandemic happened. And we're talking about a, a humid, unventilated, crammed to the rafters high school. It wasn't, you had to walk sideways down crowded hallways. Because the hallways had not only a, a clogged flow of people, but tables of books on either side, which causes people to stop. In other words, there is no way at all that the five colleges book sale will ever happen again. 
so I will never get a chance <laughs> to get back and get all the rest of those books that I missed. I gotta kick myself. Uh, but the, the other half of this question is what subgenre have you not read much from? And there are quite a few for me, even though I am a convert to romance and have been reading them energetically for years now. There are quite a few subgenres in romance that I, I either am put off from or just haven't got around to. Like, for instance, um, although I've read all the, the uh, Black Dagger Brotherhood books and all the Carpathian novels, supernatural romance would still be one of those that I haven't read many of, to the point where there are large parts of the Carpathian novels or the Black Dagger Brotherhood that I don't really quote-unquote get. Where I'm reading it and I'm thinking, okay, well, something's going on here and the author's loving it, loving presenting it, and I can tell that from online reviews that readers are loving it, but this particular part of the book I'm not getting. And I I've automatically assume that that is because that part is speaking directly to the, the paranormal subgenre and it's, like I mentioned, it's conventions, which I maybe don't know well enough so that I'm not... I, I could tell those moments were happening, but I wasn't. they weren't working on me the way they clearly were supposed to. So I need to read more supernatural romance, and what better time to do that than Summer Fling 2020. Uh, and I have one in mind. There's, there's a series by Eliza Rain called The Hades Trials. Book three, uh, called The Promise of Hades, uh, comes out soon. And books one and two look interesting. <laughs> so I will probably read that whole trilogy. Uh, to, to bone up, so to speak, on, on uh, supernatural romance. And I'll do that if I can. I'll do that in August. Although I don't, think, I don't think book three comes out until September. We'll see. We'll see what Eliza Rain might be willing to send me. Uh, then question number five is, who is one of your auto-buy romance authors? No way I can name just one here. Because there are lots and lots of them. People with, where I know they know exactly what they're doing. I know exactly what I'm going to get. Then I'm going to get them. And in this particular case... Despite how, how often I get mail from Avon or St. Martin's, this, this is still literally true. Auto-buy is still literally true. Mass-market romance novels like this thing uh, and mass-market science fiction novels are two of the only books, uh, kinds of books that I actually do buy. I actually do go to, or did go to bookstores and buy them. My local retail bookstore, the really big one, the Barnes & Noble in, uh, in the Prudential Center, uh, is back open for, for business, wear a mask, keep your distance, be responsible, don't cough on things, that sort of thing. A kind of a low-key thing that seems to be working, fingers crossed, in Massachusetts just a little, it seems to be working. Massachusetts COVID numbers are creeping back up instead of, they definitely, they definitely tend, are tending up instead of down, that's very worrying, that's very worrying. Uh, but that bookstore is still open, but they, they were closed for a long time, so they're still working through backstock and clogged orders and whatnot with a minimal staff. So the new release section for science fiction and romance hasn't been... There haven't been new releases in there, not really. So I, uh, I haven't been following it. But when I am, these are books that I actually buy. So must buy definitely applies here. And I wrote down a, a list of names. Vivian Laurent would be one of them. I uh, never miss a book of hers. But also uh, Tracy Ann Warren, Aaron Knightley, uh, Kathy Maxwell, I've mentioned on this channel before, and Gail Callan. And that's just, those are just five. I could come up with ten more easily. Uh, then question number six is, how do you typically find romance recommendations? And the suggestions here are Goodreads, YouTube, podcasts, Instagram, that sort of thing. Uh, and I, the only one of those that even partially works is uh, Sarah at Steeped in Books, who is a, one of the co-hosts, uh, the, the founder of our feast over at, uh, at uh, Summer Fling 2020, and is, in addition to reading widely in all kinds of romances, including a lot of kinds of romance that I don't read, she's also uh, two peas in a pod with Harlequin, and gives an overview of the, of the, Harlequin, the forthcoming Harlequin titles that she herself is interested in, in every month. And a lot of times I, I, I find my interest engaged by that overview. Other than that, I get my, I don't really need recommendations. I know, I'm, I know what kinds of romance I like to read. So I don't go for recommendations so much as I go for our catalogs, uh, NetGalley, that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm up for it. Romances take no time at all to read, so I'm, I can experiment and, and range far afield. But I don't do any of these others, Goodreads or uh, podcasts or Instagram. I ought to make, as I always say on this channel, I ought to make more use of Goodreads. Probably there's a lot of stuff on Goodreads that I have not even known about that I would love. Uh, and maybe they have a very good track record with long lists, detailed lists of forthcoming releases in genres. I should check that out, but I don't right now. Uh, question number seven is, what is an upcoming romance release you're excited for? 
Uh, and I, for this one, I want to answer two things. One is an upcoming romance release that I am going to read, largely thanks to Summer Flame 2020, but I can't 100% say I'm excited for it. It's Amish romance, which I've never understood. I've never understood why there is a category called Amish romance, and I have a hard time figuring out what the appeal is. So, some answers come to mind on why so many readers would like romances set in Amish communities. Some answers come to mind, but they're not worthy answers. They don't speak well of the people, if I'm right. Those readers. They don't speak well of those readers, if I'm right. Uh, I, I have to assume that most of the people who read and love Amish romances have never been in an Amish community or met any Amish people. I just have to assume that's the case. Uh, but one way or another, the, the novels, the Amish romances, don't have to be that. They aren't, they aren't the same thing as the Amish community. And again, there may be aspects of conventions here that I am missing out on. So I know quite a few of my Summer Fling 2020 hosts like Amish romance. So I've got my eyeball on one of them by Beverly Lewis, who I guess is an institution in Amish romance. And she has a new book coming out called The Stone Wall uh, that I will be reading. I'm hoping I'll be getting it on this channel. I'm hoping I'll, that I will open it on camera instead of off camera. But in terms of something that I'm that I'm really excited for, uh, well, that would be um, there's a new Regency romance coming out called Brazen in Blue, and it's the fifth book in a series of five. The Muse of Salon is the series, and this is book number five. This ties up the whole series, and uh, tucks away all of the loose ends from all of those earlier books, all of which I've read. Uh, so I'm, I'm greatly looking forward to that. I think that comes out in August. Um, or maybe September. Brazen and Blue is the name of the title. And then uh, question number eight is, what is one misconception about romance that you would like to lay to rest? Well, I've mentioned it already in this tag. One misconception about romance that I'd like to lay to rest is that it's a dumb genre. There aren't any dumb genres. There are only dumbly done books. It's not a dumb genre. And I'd, I would... I would Pity your, I would pity your immortal soul if you tried to say that sort of crap to its authors, who are the hardest working performers anywhere in the book world. I've met a lot of these ladies, and I've met a lot of, of a lot of authors who've also met them, a lot of readers who've also met them, and uh, this is not a dumb genre. That that thing that bothers me about it is the people thinking, well, if I want to turn my mind off, I'll read a romance novel. No, you want to turn on a different part of your mind. These have happy endings, romances tend to have happy endings. They tend to have easily graspable characters, although the characters can have shades of... Um, they can be multifaceted, they can have shades of grey, but they tend to be easily graspable. And they tend to eschew... They, they do without fancy pants postmodern show-offing. They don't do that at all. They are straightforward stories. They are told... There is a story told in straightforward ways. They are graspable, identifiable characters. And sooner or later, the plot, the novel, or the series will wind its way to a happy ending. There's nothing wrong with any of that. And there's nothing dumb about any of that either. It all depends on how it's done. I could, of course, point to romance novels that were done poorly, that are dumb. And it always kills me when people say, well, you know, romance readers, they just turn their minds off. I want to say... If you watch Sarah's channel, yes, you're gonna you're gonna hear her champion a whole bunch of books. She's gonna she's gonna look forward to a whole bunch of books, and sometimes she'll say this looks wonderful. I'm sure I will enjoy it. But if you watch her channel, you'll see that quite often she comes back and says, "Well, I read it, I liked it, but it had glaring problems, and here's what they are." Romance writers don't romance readers don't turn that off that part of their brain at all. So I, that's that that's the misconception, the foremost misconception that I would like to clear up. This is not a dumb genre. Uh, connected with this would be my standard line here on this channel. Your literary snobbery is not my problem. <laughs> uh, and then uh, question number nine, who is the most recent romance reading content creator you came across that you'd like to shout out? Uh, and for me, that would be a tiny little channel. When I watched it, she had 11 subscribers. We should be able to get that up to 50 during the month of Summer Fling, I would think. Uh, her na channel's name is Ellie Reads. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, and some of you suspicious Aloysiuses are going to say, well, you only like her channel because she has a dog. I like plenty of channels that have cats, too. Sarah's channel is absolutely up to her eyeballs in cats. I still like that. No, it's it's a good channel, and it just kills me when somebody has... A, I remember, 11 subscribers? 
we can do better than that for a, for a totally engaging on-camera presence. I think we can do better than that. Uh, but anyway, that is the, uh, the get to know the romance reader tag. And the only thing that's left to do is tag people, and I honestly think that every romance reader on BookTube other than me has already done this tag, so I don't have anybody to tag. If you read romances and you've somehow not been tagged with this, then feel free. Go ahead and do it. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up for now. I think this is Tag Tuesday. If so, if I'm wrong, if this is Monday, then I'll do another tag tomorrow. <laughs> but in the meantime, I will see you later. Thank you, BookTube.